Hi, I'm Margaret Deccan, CEO of Six Meridian. Thank you for joining us for our 2020 Paul Virtual Series. We have always looked forward to connecting our clients with the most innovative financial experts at our annual Investor Summit held each fall. But given the continued concerns surrounding COVID-19, we made the difficult decision to cancel our 2020 event. This was a tough call to make given the caliber of speakers and the very exciting topics we hope to share with you. But we remain committed to bringing you new ideas to improve your financial life, this time in a virtual setting. In this series, we cover topics such as equity markets, economic outlooks, systematic equity investing, the impact of politics on the market, and to lighten it up, a virtual culinary experience. The final presentation highlights one of Wichita's most talented chefs, Catherine Elder of Eldersley Farm. Just in time for the holidays, Catherine walks you through the steps to create your own stunning edible work of art. And in the era of COVID-19, Catherine shares tips on how to make your grazing table user-friendly. We hope you enjoy this presentation and we thank you for your continued support of our business. Thank you, Margaret. I'm Katie Dora with Mark Arts, and we are excited to be featuring one of our talented culinary instructors, Catherine Elder, this evening. But before she starts on her virtual masterpiece, we'd like to tell you a little bit about Mark Arts. As many will know, we are celebrating our 100th anniversary in 2020 and like to talk a little bit about how we ended up in our new campus. This facility was made possible through the support of hundreds of generous patrons in our community that truly embraced our vision of creating an artistic oasis in the city, and this masterpiece will serve generations to come. In addition to our culinary arts studio where we are this evening, we have eight additional studios. We have individuals from all ages and different artistic backgrounds that take classes at Mark Arts. So if you are interested in programs and our printmaking, sculpture, ceramics, metals, painting or drawing, digital, or a youth class, please visit us at markartsks.com. One of the things that makes Mark Arts unique is we have exhibitions that feature contemporary artists from all over our country. And the work here at Mark Arts is also for sale so that you can add to your collection and support these artists. We hope that you will consider having one of your events here at Mark Arts. Our beautiful campus has been home to events with over 20,000 people just last year. The modern venue is perfect for business gatherings or special occasions in your personal life as well. To learn more about Mark Arts, please visit us at markartsks.com. Please enjoy your time, and it is a pleasure to introduce you to Catherine Elder as she creates a virtual masterpiece for you. My name is Catherine Elder. I am the chef and owner of Eldersley Farm with my husband George, who is now our resident cheese maker. Um, I'm here today to show you how to prepare a holiday spread. Um, this charcuterie board is very user friendly. Um, we have a few smaller bites on here. Um, this holiday season, um, with uh, all of that's going on in the world, um, we're working through the details of um, plating a holiday spread for your cocktail party or event that um, is safe and user friendly with tongs and picks and um, small bites but still gets to celebrate the art of the table. Here we have a spread that includes a variety of Eldersley cheeses um, as well as some small soup shots, um, some little lettuce bundles, and a little bit of a of a um, elevated bacon wrap date so that uh, we have a few bites on this board besides just the cheese and crackers. Um, one of the things as we prepare this board, and we'll talk through it as we put the board together in a few minutes, um, while you're shopping for your board, making sure that you're getting a variety of textures and um, varied cheeses, nuts, 
um, multiple different types of crackers so that as you put your board together, it can really come to life, as well as making sure that you have access to some citrus and um, some greenery. Um, I always like to start with a bunch of dishes. Um, we have a few different things to hold our picks, our um, little soup spoons, as well as smaller ramekins. We've used these tiny little jars for our soup shots. Um, but if you don't have access to a large charcuterie board like this one, um, we can also layer multiples, either slates, um, which I think you can get at places like um, William Sonoma, or smaller uh, walnut charcuterie boards, which we have at Eldersley, or um, any sort of tray, um, making sure that you're layering. But also, um, this year, one of the things that we've really uh, gravitated toward is making sure that everything is prepared and bite-sized so that you're not dealing with a bunch of cutting and sharing of utensils. Um, but then we can have this beautiful holiday spread. Um, a lot of cheese boards pair really nicely with a Sauvignon Blanc, uh, but during the holiday, obviously, we have lots of good red drinking wines, um, as like Pinot or a Shiraz would go really nicely with a, a large charcuterie spread such as this. Um, as well as in the cocktail world, um, gin cocktails pair really nicely with cheese as well. So we'll get to it and we'll start with the dates, moving on through plating our charcuterie board. We'll be ready for your party. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started with our bacon wrap dates. Um, I've cut my bacon, I've taken a whole pound of bacon and cut straight through the middle with a pair of kitchen shears. And then I'm just gonna take each individual date, these are medjool dates, um, which are pitted already, which is quite convenient, and I'm just gonna roll them right up. And I'm gonna use my gloves. These, when I'm cooking, I like to keep my skewers that I'm using for meat products separate from anything else that I'm using for my charcuterie board. Um, and then we'll just go right on through and set it on a parchment lined uh, baking sheet. And we will carry on through each of these. We'll just roll, roll, roll. Um, and when you're using the skewer, make sure that you're back about a centimeter from the edge of the bacon so that when it's baking, um, as the bacon starts to shrink, it doesn't pull away from that skewer. And we'll line those out. Do a few more of these. And these are great because you could, each of your guests can just pick up each individual one by their skewer so you're not worried about any cross-contamination, people touching too many things. Um, and it's a really crowd-pleasing, friendly thing to do. So with these dates, um, a traditional bacon wrap date, you can just use any kind of bacon that you prefer. I like applewood smoked bacon for these. Um, but I also am going to go ahead and finish those off after they come out of the oven with a little bit of glaze, just to give them a little bit of interest, and also to take the dullness off of um, the bacon, make them shiny. And my oven is preset to 350 degrees, so once I get this whole tray filled, we're going to pop them right in the oven and move on to the next thing. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is our little lettuce bundles. Um, I like to use a small Cuisinart for this, but if you don't have a little one, you can just use a big one, it's no big deal. Or you can use a mortar and pestle. Um, I'm gonna take this guy and my toasted salted pistachios and just dump them right on in. I'm gonna use about a cup of toasted salted pistachios and some fresh citrus. I'm gonna use a little lemon zest in here. An extra pinch of salt. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grind this. Plug your ears. I'm just gonna go ahead and coarsely grind these first before I add any um, oil. And once I get a pretty fine crumb out of these pistachios, I'm gonna add some olive oil. I like this California Olive Ranch. It's a 
fairly um, mild olive oil. Nice dollop in there. Pop my lid back on. And I'm just gonna pulse until that starts to come together. We're making almost a butter for the interior of our little lettuce bundle. All right. Now I have kind of this, this paste. I'm gonna set that here. And I have my baby romaine. I also like to get a bunching lettuce. It makes it easier to assemble the little bundles. I'm gonna set my washed lettuce. I've washed this in advance so that it's all ready. And I also have some um, lengths of twine. Um, these are about eight inches long. Um, so I'm just gonna lay those out so that once my hands are gunky, I don't have to deal with them. We'll do four of those for now. Um, and I'm gonna have my lettuce. I'm gonna take each one of these um, pieces of lettuce and add just a dollop of this pistachio to the center. And then I'm going to bundle up my baby romaine. With all the little leaves up. I'm gonna set it right in the interior of that, um, that lettuce piece, right on top of that pistachio, wrapping this around gently. And then I'm gonna take my twine and just tie that little lettuce bundle in a bow. Or not a bow, just a little knot. So I have that little bunch. Um, when we prep this for the charcuterie board, we'll dip the top in a dressing and then it'll get a little granola crumb. Um, but for now, I'm gonna set this aside so that I can store it in the refrigerator. I'll make um, one of these per person and it's an easy thing to just dip and you can pop it right in your mouth. If you prefer to make them a little smaller for a one bite, you can split your piece of lettuce taking off that bottom crunchy part, and then you have a little bit less of a voluminous top when you use five or six leaves of lettuce in there. Making it a little easier, if you <laughs> can imagine um, biting that guy. So um, I'm gonna store those in the refrigerator undressed until um, I'm ready to plate up my charcuterie board so that the lettuce leaves stay crispy. Um, you can drape a wet paper towel over the top of those when they're in the refrigerator if you want to make them in the morning. Say your guests are coming for a 5 p.m. cocktail party, you can prep all of this in advance and leave it in your fridge and it'll be ready to go. All right, the last thing that we're going to um, place on our charcuterie board uh, with all of the cheese spread as a, um, as a one bite, kind of one finger deal is a little soup shooter. This can be done with almost any um, puree type of soup. I'm finishing off a um, squash bisque with a little splash of heavy cream. Um, this is made with roasted delicata squash, thyme, chicken stock, um, and some sauteed shallot. I'm um, blending my soups in a Vitamix so that they're very, very creamy so that when you take that little shooter, we're gonna plate them in these little guys, um, that your guests can either sip it straight out of here or um, we like to use, at uh, Eldersley, we like to use our little gelato spoon sometimes for thicker soups. Um, and they work really nicely. Um, if you don't have any squeeze bottles at home, um, I would recommend getting some, or you can actually use a piping bag for your soup as long as it's not too hot. I'm just gonna transfer that to my squeeze bottle, and you'll see that velvety consistency, which will make it a really nice um, addition to your board. This can be done at the very end, right before you're ready to plate your cheese, or even afterwards. Um, so that it doesn't get cold.
Now that my dates are sizzling away in the oven and my lettuce bundles are prepared, I'm going to go ahead and prepare my citrus for my board. Um, I like using a variety of sizes of citrus. I'm just going to show you one fun way to cut your citrus so that when you put it on the board amidst all the cheese, it just gives it a lot of vibrancy and a little bit of um, texture on your charcuterie board. So I'm going to take a small paring knife and go straight into the center of the orange at an angle. Here and just do a zigzag right into the center all the way around the orange. And if you go past the center, you're not going to, um, you, you won't typically have problems when you open up your orange. Um, and I'm, as you can see, kind of, I'm just following this zigzag pattern, almost like cutting the top of a pumpkin. Just back and forth, and it smells incredible. Another way to um, jazz up the citrus on your board is if you uh, get cl whole cloves, you can pierce the cloves into the skin of the orange, and, um, oh, there, it popped right open, and then I have these beautiful, um, little citrus that I'm going to put in here for now, um, but when I'm plating my board, they're all ready so that I can just grab them and plop them on there um, and put them where they belong. This is a smaller um, blood orange, really beautiful color, um, so I'm just going to go a little shallower into this piece of citrus. And again, you're um, just going for texture for your board. So as you're preparing all of your elements, you're shopping for crackers, you're getting your cheese, you're looking for a variety of colors and textures so that when um, you put your board together, you have you know, greens and yellows and oranges and then um, the whites of the cheeses. Some cheeses are yellowy. You can get a blue and you'll get just a lot of different um, fun texture there. So here we go. I have a little part right there. There, and then I have a smaller one. Um, with the lemon, just so that I don't have too much redundancy um, of these pokey oranges, I'm just going to cut straight through um, and you'll get that aroma. I like to take the seeds out, even though nobody's eating this lemon. Um, it just looks prettier without the seeds. So my citrus is prepared and um, I've gone shopping at Eldersley Farm this morning for my cheese. So I have um, a variety of cow and goat cheeses um, from our farm. Um, I have a, a um, baby brie style called Cloverdale. I have Foggy Air, which is a camembert style. The Spring Edge, which is a cow and goat cheese brie style. Brambly Air, which is a um, cow cheese made with, um, the rind is washed with a blackberry must from a goat cheese, or excuse me, from a beer that was made using the farm's blackberries. This one's pretty special. And then West Fork, our um, Gouda style cheese and some Caprino Fresco, which is a um, creamy chev like uh, fresher goat cheese. So those I've prepared this morning in the morning before my event. I'm going to pull those out of the fridge. And I have that cheese all prepped. Um, I cover it with parchment. Um, these cheeses are all pre-cut so that I can put them right onto my board. Today we're plating a charcuterie board for 12 guests. Um, so I have 12 pieces of each of these cheeses, um, a little bit of mix. Um, again, you'll notice in the color and texture of the cheese, you have some variety, um, which is always nice. I've chosen a number of different kinds of crackers. I have a honey, some almonds, my citrus that I've prepared. Um, as well as some nuts, some salamis. So we'll get started plating this board. And what I like to do on these boards is start, um, start with the cheeses and kind of map out 
how I want it to look. We're keeping in mind um, this holiday season that we don't want a lot of, um, you want your guests to be able to get to the cheese without touching too many things. Um, so we're gonna plate it in such a way that it's easily accessible um, and pretty user friendly. So I'm gonna pop a pair of gloves on just so that I can go back and forth between these cheeses. And when you're cutting these cheeses at home, particularly if you're using a camembert or creamier style cheese, um, you'll probably not want to do, not prepare the cheese more than a day in advance because it will start to puddle. Um, but I have my foggy air wedges. I'm just gonna go ahead and set them kind of in a little pattern here. And again, you're just going for variety across this board. It's not, um, for me, I like, I like to look and see a variety of textures and heights. Um, so these are kind of stacked, whereas this one, I'm just gonna fan out a bit so that somebody could come and get it with um, some tongs easily. And again, with these creamier cheeses, um, this is the last step before my guests arrive. If they're coming at five, I'm plating up the charcuterie board at about 4.15 um, before you know, lighting candles and opening the wine and all of that. So I'm just gonna make a little path across my board here with this foggy air, which smells so good. And again, if I'm alternating here, um, I'm not, these are easy, very easily picked up by a guest with tongs or with a toothpick um, so that we're not worried about, again, the, the grazing table that is very trendy um, is a wonderful way to serve, but we wanna just make sure that we're cognizant this season in particular of making things user friendly. So I'm gonna make a little pattern here. And then I have a larger whole piece just so that you can kind of see what the rind looks like. This one's so interesting. This is that brambly air which is washed with the, um, the blackberry must. So I'm gonna set those there. And this board is particularly large. This is um, a cross section of a black walnut stump, um, but you can use either multiple boards or smaller boards and you just build up higher. Um, Sometimes I'll plate things on these slates, like one cheese with an accoutrement, or for a party of 12, you could easily put all of your cheese on something like this size and then put your accoutrements on the table beside in smaller containers if you prefer. So we're gonna carry on with these cheeses. This feta, I'm gonna go ahead and put over here, kind of in a little pile. I'm gonna go ahead and wait on my last two cheeses until I have some more of the um, elements of this board on in place so that I can kind of work them in um, according to what looks best today. Um, with some of these smaller cheeses, um, if you prefer to go ahead and use a, a cheese knife on your board, you can just plate that whole round um, on your board and put the knife right on in there. Next, I'm gonna go ahead with some of this juniper salami. Um, this juniper salami has a little bit of spice to it. It's from a um, salami maker out of Denver called Il Porcellino. Um, and again, I like to just take the time to lay these out nicely in a little row. Um, when you slice a salami like this, you'll want to slice it very thinly or even purchase it pre-sliced if you, um, we have the advantage of having a slicer, but um, you can use a, a very sharp chef's knife and um, slice right in, in really thin slices so that you can um, get the best flavor out of those salamis. Again, I like using kind of the, the whole pieces of some of these things so that you 
um, visually can see what those look like. Making a little flower there. Center. Then I have my olives. And these are a mix of Castelvetrano olives and Kalamata olives. They both go very nicely with the goat cheese and um, the cow cheeses. But you're welcome to add any kind of olives that you prefer. Um, just because of the brine, I like to keep them in their own little dishes. And it also keeps them contained on your board. I'm gonna put one over by the feta because olives and feta go so nicely together. I'm gonna plate a second one right over here. So that if this is kind of your centerpiece, your guests can get at one side of the board or the other and still get to some of these things. All right, next, I'm gonna go ahead with some of these nuts, just right here. Again, using my varied ingredients kind of in different spots on the board, um, giving more visual interest. I'll plate my honey right here. And a jam right over here. And each of these you'll want to make sure have their own individual utensils as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start with the crackers to just build up my board a bit um, before adding the, um, the final pieces. Um, these crackers are from a San Francisco company called Rustic Bakery. Um, and they're a nice mild cracker. These are a sourdough. Um, and I find the, um, the shape really appealing, um, particularly on this board. You can kind of create more visual appeal and interest spreading them out. I also like these um, lavash rounds. These are a three inch lavash. You can also buy big 15 inch rounds of lavash that you can break and that can also give a lot of height to your board. Sometimes they get a little stubborn. And then again, I'm just gonna tuck these in so that they're, they're giving height rather than just flat on the on the board. If I want all of these pieces to be separate or I'm using these smaller boards, I might put all of my crackers in a bowl. Um, or you could even use a large vase or um, a shallow, um, a big shallow bowl down the middle or, and then tucking in your cheese boards on the sides can be really lovely couple over here. And again, we're just using a variety of um, different crackers, both for flavor. Um, it's fun to play with the, the different textures of the cheeses um, and the flavors of the crackers, as well as just the visual appeal. It's the charcuterie board can be really, really a piece of art in your holiday world. These have a little bit of um, rosemary uh, and pecan and raisin in them. These are the Leslie Stowe Raincoast Crisps, which go really nicely with some of these um, softer cheeses. I'm also gonna put some house-made pickles on here. Um, if you don't have access to a restaurant kitchen, you can um, pickle your own vegetables at home very simply and quickly, um, or at many stores you can buy lots of interesting pickles. Um, these are a, a ginger, uh, a spicy ginger pickled carrot. I'm just gonna kind of spread those out around the board. So remembering that I um, am preparing to put on my uh, little salad bundles as well as the dates and my soup shots, I'm gonna leave some space 
particularly on this side, I'm gonna plate my soup over here or maybe here, but I wanna make sure that I'm leaving enough space on the board to add those, um, those finishing touches at the end. I'm not gonna over pickle it. And then I've already, um, this again, these are all things that you can do ahead. Just the plating of the board has to be done right before, but I can wash and um, trim my grapes so that I can just tuck them right in. And as you can see, as this board gets built, um, there's actually quite a bit of food to where you um, are able to serve guests quite generously from one uh, spread without having to do um, a full meal or if you want to, ha if you're um, having a cocktail party and you know, you're having a drop-in sort of thing, you, uh, your guests can easily eat from here without, um, worrying about you know, the, the length of time that they're in your home or, or something like that. I think that's sufficient. I'm gonna go ahead and set a couple of these citrus on there and you'll see it just start to come to life as all of these elements make their way to this board. The citrus also is helpful because it can, you can use it almost as a prop for the other pieces of your board. I missed a seed, get that guy. All right, I'm gonna check on my dates. As my dates come out of the oven, I'm gonna start to let them cool down just a little bit. Um, but while they cool, I'm going to brush them with a little bit of um, this spicy jam that has, it's a spiced honey. And it'll just give it a little bit of glaze, a little bit more interest. Um, you could use a pepper jelly or a fig jam. Um, anything that suits you really can be added to these. And you'll see it just gives it a little bit of glaze and it'll also help bring out the flavor of the date um, and just make it a little more festive. I'm gonna let those cool off before putting them onto my board. And since these are gonna cool, I'm gonna go ahead with my salad bundles. You'll see I've draped a wet paper towel over these to make sure that the lettuce stays crisp. I'm gonna take that right off. Um, and if you have two, if your, your strings are too long, you're welcome to trim those up a little. I have a little cherry vinaigrette right here. Um, any salad dressing that you prefer will do nicely for this purpose. And then I have a little bit of um, a savory granola. You can also use a, um, a breadcrumb or any sort of little little thing with crunch or even if you want to just use um, a pistachio crumb just made from the the nuts before you made when we made that um, pesto for the inside of these little bundles I could have saved aside some of those crumbs for this same purpose if you don't have savory granola on hand so I'm just going to take this little lettuce bundle dip just the edges into my dressing making a little bit of a mess, but not too much. And then I'm gonna dip them into that crumb and I'm picking up just a little bit of the crunch. Um, maybe I'll add just a little. And then I'm gonna set that bundle right here on my board so that somebody can pick it right up off of the board. I'm gonna do the same here. And the dressing will just help that crumb stick to your um, lettuce bunch, like little croutons. The nice thing about these little guys is that when you, when you eat it, you'll get that creamy um, pistachio from the center, but it'll have a little bit of vibrancy and lift, almost like a little salad that we've plated right on our charcuterie board. I'm gonna set these on this side.
set those there. And in the time that it's taken me to do that, I think my dates should be ready to go onto the board. Cleaning up as we go. Set my dates here with their sticks facing out so that someone can easily pick them up. And you can put little bunches of these dates really anywhere around your board. And then I've prepared that creamy soup and kept it in my warming drawer so that I don't have to deal with um, putting it into the little containers. I'm going to pull that out here. And then I can set each one of those onto my board. Maybe scattered about, maybe in a little line. Put a couple over here. And you can either keep your little soup spoons um, in, in a container kind of like this on your board, or you can just set them with their little spoons like that. And we'll get a couple other spoons. Um, I'm also going to make sure that on my board I have the proper utensils. I'm going to have tongs, and then I'm also going to have some of these bamboo skewers if I want to use my soup spoons like so and use a little glass so now for finishing touches I'm going to put a little greenery on my board if you have evergreens um, in your yard even, you can take um, cuttings from a cedar or a juniper tree. Um, some of the berries on those are very beautiful. You can just rinse them off, let them dry while you're plating your board, and then tuck them in. Or if you have um, floral arrangements um, for your party, a lot of times you can get just a little bit of greenery with or from those. Um, these are just very vibrant and it'll give depth to your board. Also, you could use herbs, rosemary, thyme. Um, if you happen to be fortunate enough to have access to fresh bay leaves, those are very beautiful. I'm just going to trim right along here. Pop those around. Take some of these kind of succulent looking branches. I'm just tucking those in. Not too close to the lettuce so that nobody accidentally eats them. And between our citrus and our greenery, as well as all of this beautiful food on our board, I think we're ready for our party. Thank you so much for joining Eldersley in the culinary studio at Mark Arts today to plate up a big charcuterie board for the holidays. Just a reminder, you don't have to go the whole nine. You can have a much smaller spread with a few cheeses or any one of these little bite appetizers at your holiday party. And thank you to Six Meridian. Take care.